the downtime that we have there is really draining. You know, you wait around for it to start, you prepare for it to start, you stand and you get up. Like last night, I, I, I got home at, I, I don't know, you, you know what the time was, it must have been about nine, nine o'clock. And then I had to do C-SPAN immediately after that. And then I had, you know, my usual 600 emails to look at. That gets you to like literally a 19 hour day, which after a while, you know, it, it's not easy. It's very difficult to, to go back and say that. I mean, obviously, you could logically say that if you had a process that was ongoing and you started mitigation earlier, you could have saved lives. Obviously, no one is gonna deny that. But what goes into those kinds of decisions is, is complicated. And you've got to understand that you don't make the timeline. The virus makes the timeline. Mm. So you've got to respond in what you see happen. Is there any evidence to suggest that, as with malaria, it might be used as a prophylaxis right. against COVID-19? No, the, the answer is is no. And and the, the evidence that you're talking about, John, is anecdotal evidence. I think we've got to be careful that we don't make that majestic leap to assume that this is a knockout drug. He's a good man. I like uh, Dr. Fauci a lot, just so you understand. No, he's not here because we really weren't discussing what he's best at, but he'll be back up very soon.